and then I took off again. And I was able to look down out in the clouds and look down. Fifteen years old, I'm studying universal laws, metaphysics, on my own. This is not so high school courses. This is me on my own. Every book I received came from somebody. I never bought one book. Somebody would give me a book. Carlos Castanados, Don Juan. I continued to write. I sung acapella. I got involved in dance groups. Did step. 17, I did the martial arts. At the age of 17, I was so dynamic in high school with all everything I was doing that the assistant principal was our chauffeur. The assistant principal would drive his car with me and my boys in it around to the different charity homes and the colleges and things like that to sing a cappella for people. Wow. They also would shut down the school for me to stand in the auditorium and do my solo work as a poet. I was a star in the school for the creativity. The art teacher would let me sign passes for me to get out of classes so I could do one-man shows with my art. But see, there was something special about me from the very beginning. Being brought up in the Moorish American culture, see, you were taught that you are a child of God. Anything God can do, you can do. Now, I was three, four, five, six, seven years old getting that lesson. And when you're three, four, five, six, seven years old, and somebody tells you, you're a child of God, you can do anything God can do. You believe it. I didn't know any better. I did not know any better. And on the other side, you know, I had parents. My father had a business. My uncle had a business. You know, everybody around me had some kind of business. And you're always told to be the best. If you sweep crap, starts with an S in his own language, if you have to sweep that, be the best at sweeping it. Well, in my mind, it's like, well, I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. I'm a child of God. And anything I do, I should be striving for greatness in it. Okay, so if I'm going to sweep this floor, then I'm going to sweep this floor until it's polished. I'm going to sweep this floor until it's not a speck of dust. I aspired to work when I was six, seven, eight, and nine years old. People were better than me, and I would go back and study and be better than them. I didn't even know why they called it work. And I still don't understand why they call it work. I really don't. I have so much fun. Because you see, as a mature adult, when people have me come out and do things like this and they're going to pay me money, I'm, I'm laughing. <laughs> You're going to pay me to do what I'm having fun doing? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> people pay me to write articles. And I'm getting the most out of it I can. I'm going to write as big and best as I can in this article. I'm going to shoot for the Pulitzer Prize, and I'm going to get paid. <laughs> Isn't it an awful thing? <laughs> You're going to flip a burger at McDonald's. Remember, you get paid to flip this stupid burger. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And you have the opportunity to excel to any height you so choose. That's what we don't understand. Somebody's paying you, and you have the freedom in this country to excel to any height you so choose. Well, I got that real early. <laughs> By 17, I graduated from high school. Eight of us got together and started an entertainment business. We bought a book called Think and Grow Rich by Bowie Hill. Yeah. yeah. And we studied it every Monday night. We talked about the plans, the strategy, the visions, how we're going to implement things. I was the youngest one in the group, by the way. Within two years, we had the largest discotheque club in the state of New Jersey. 
with the radio show on Saturdays. I work at seven nights a week. <laughs> I was 19 years old when I met Patty the Bell at the Billboard Convention in New York. And I walked in because I didn't have to pay because I volunteered to be a public relations representative for the International Society of Artists. And I made myself a press badge so I was able to walk in <laughs> without paying 500 bucks. <laughs> met Patty the Bell. She thought I was somebody because I was the youngest one probably in the conference. I'm strolling around. Patty said, you want to come to the party? I had to do some people. I said, hey, I like to do that. I'm bouncing around, Patty's taking me around because I'm the youngest one there, introducing me to Grace Jones and Gloria Gaynor, all these folks you don't know. But they were anyway, they, they, they were superstars back in the day. And I was meeting these people at 19 years old. But that's an issue at 19 years old. Because with all the success that we were having with those missions in the entertainment industry, it's not the very best of industries. There are a lot of elements that you really don't want to deal with. But they're there. A lot of behaviors that are just not conducive to living a high quality life. As the youngest person in our group, I felt that. I saw my friends dropping like flies. And I had to do something because I wanted to live. I really wanted to live. I became a consultant. My first client in 19. I saw that I had some potential to do some things with the artwork that I was doing. And I started to ease my way out of the entertainment industry, trying to do something for myself, and I did. But this time, the dream of flying had advanced even more. It was no longer this. It was just taking off. Just taking off. And I'm moving. I'm able to sit on clouds and look down. At 19 years old, with all success that we appear to have, I felt like I wanted to commit suicide. And I went to my man and I said, God, you know, I'm messing this up. This, something's not right. What do you want me to do? And I got it. It came with the call. I asked. And I received. And I remember the vision that went in my head. It was the love of Jesus. And he said, I am. And for 20 years, I used the decree, I am. Without understanding what the heck I was doing. But I got an answer. But a decision had to be made by me. I wasn't given the decision. I had to make the decision. And I contemplated it because I like Superman. Y'all know Superman, right? right. Man, okay. Well, see, I love Superman. And Superman could like do these fantastic feats, right? And I'm going, man, you know, <laughs> I like to be like Superman. But then my reasoning would kick in and say, you know. That kryptonite, you know, messes them up. You know, Superman's good, but he can't handle kryptonite. And I wanted to make the best possible decision for myself. I didn't want to have Superman powers, so I tossed some kryptonite out there and wiped that clean. You know, I didn't want that. So I asked God, help me out here. And God said, I am. I said, oh, duh. Superman, kryptonite, God, all-powerful. No limitations beyond kryptonite. So I said, you know what, God? If I have to make the best decision for me, I'm going with you. I did. And within three and a half years, without a regular job, I bought my first property. Yes. And I remember I was telling Chavis how I stood on the balcony looking at the courtyard. And I put my hands up like this and said, God gave me all this, the universe, all of this is for me. You remember the exercise? I need a little stimulation here. Let's do it one more time. I am thinking big. Yes, indeed. I continue to think big throughout my life. No limitations accepted. Because I'm a child of God and you can do anything God can do. So 
now I'm in a condominium. I met my wife at the disco. She's a dancer. She's the only person that could keep up with me. So I admired her. And that was a good thing. We happened to have two children. I'm in my condo, and the dream continued. But this time, it was much, much different than any other time. It was incredible. I'm standing in the dream. I'm standing in my living room. And my brother's standing here. And I'm going to show off my power because I advanced from leaping into the air to doing levitation. I'm standing still. I bring my knees to my chest. And I lay my body out loud in thin air. I had reached a whole other dimension by this time. I left the company that I was working with as a national company because the business on the outside was actually greater than what they were doing for me. I worked with a 19 year old Jewish fellow who, from zero dollars, built a three and a half million dollar company in three and a half years. He was the greatest salesman to this day that I've ever met in my life. And we built a three and a half million dollar company. By this time, in my like early 30s, I'm starting to get recognized nationally. And people were coming to me or giving me offers. I found myself at some point giving or doing consulting for Fortune 500 companies. And they made me one offer one company called Jobs and Controls. I'll mention the name. It's a family like you to go around the country doing what you do. For fifteen hundred dollars a day, I said no. Believe it or not, because our first child was born, and I had to make a decision. My decision was, I want to be a dad. So, I did that, and little Olga was three and a half months premature. And I remember going to the hospital and talking to the anchor mayor that she presented it was all glass. I'm going, hey honey, you ready for this? Nurse comes by and says to me, keep talking, she's responding to you. I said, okay. Honey, how you doing? You ready for this? Well, little Olga came home. It was so cold. She was so small, she could fit in my palm. And I would do this. I would fly her around. And I would sing. And then I would put music on and dance with me like this. And at one year old, I sat her in my lap and I started taking up little fingers and going on the keyboard. A, 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 I, 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 K, K, K. And Christmas. Our family was reading the letters on the boxes. <laughs> T-O-Y. Honey, <coughs> you see what's going on? She's reading. We went bonkers. I bought her every piece of software there was, every app there was, for reading here was, and by three years old girlfriend was writing stories and doing animations and running a radio show at three. Wow. Three years old. Eight years old, she wrote her first novel. By the time she was in seventh grade, girlfriend was ranking in the top five percent in the country. <laughs> Got partial scholarship at Pratt University. <laughs> and currently today, it's a full time job in the executive administrator with a dance theater production company. These guys have seen her work. <laughs> <laughs> they were taught to think big without me teaching them to think big. Because what happened was, me and the dad, I just took them everywhere and I to see what I was doing. Yeah, I worked 110 hours a week, was nothing, I had fun. But I would take them everywhere and let them be exposed. I never did that once tell them what to do. But they were exposed to new things all the time. The second one was born. And uh, seven years later, she became a professional photographer at 13 years old. Her first client was a national speaker. <laughs> They don't know how to think small, and they don't know about limitations because it doesn't exist. And it really does not exist. And the truth of the matter is, we determine our limitations. Right? Remember, the greatest power in the universe is life. life. 
and it's in every one of you. It has been demonstrated throughout mankind's history not to have a limitation. Because you remember, the greatest example walked on water. The greatest example said, heal, go up and see your father, walk. Matter of fact, skip a little bit while you're at it. The greatest example raised people from the dead. The greatest example went to the point of saying, I gotta do this. You know, I, I think y'all might get this. If I lay my body down for three days, I, I, I got y'all thinking I'm dead, right? Okay, I'm gonna lay my body down for three days. I'm gonna, you know, I, I imagine this would be my, my mind. It's like, you know, dead party liquor. You know. <laughs> and then three days later, you roll stone back and say, yo, y'all, check it out. Y'all thought I was dead, I'm not. There is no death. And he walked around 40 days and then did his thing with the ascension at the end of 40 days. I look at that as an example because he said, greater things than these shall ye do. Greater things than these shall ye do. And my friend Travis over here knows what that means. I will not make him a liar. Y'all get that? If he said greater things than these shall we do, I will not make him a liar. I am proving him right. However long it takes, whatever it takes, the same life in him is the same life in me. I am thinking big.
The power to love is limitless and it can create a universe because it created you. The same life in God created you and you and you and all of you. And believe me, you didn't have access. And I'm going to give you one example before I close of how powerful you really are because every single one of you know it. You cut your finger, what happens? You bleed. If my finger was cut and I took my thumb over and put it over the cut, what would occur eventually? Stop bleeding. It would stop bleeding. Within two or three weeks, if I looked for the cut, would it be there? No. It'd probably disappear, would it? Yeah. Isn't that incredible that you have the power within your life to put new cells where prior they were damaged? Your body demonstrates to you the ability to replace damaged cells with new. That's power. That power exists in every single one of us. From an infant to an adult. Life is demonstrating its power to you all the time. To cut your hair to it growing back. To thinking at the speed of light. To have a capacity, a limitless capacity to acquire knowledge. And the depth of love in your heart that is so powerful, so extremely powerful, that you can change the world. Let's give me one more before I go. I am thank you. Big. Thank you very much. Hey guys, give us one minute. One minute. Everybody up. Alright guys, from all of us here at Wolf Empower Movement, we want to thank you so much for having us. Come on Denzel. We want to thank you so much for having us. I just want to have everybody just very briefly, very, very briefly, just give them your name and give them something inspirational to walk away with, please. My name is Denzel A. Pryor. Challenge yourself every day. Not think small, think bigger. Read more, seek mentors endlessly, seek knowledge, knowledge is power. Thank you. I'm going to call home. Uh, if I can give you anything, is that the most important thing in your life is getting to your future. All right? So make sure you get to your future. All right? And whatever that picture is in your mind that you see your future being, that's what you go after every day. I just stand me out. And I'm going to say, be the best possible example to your neighbors, your brothers, and sisters. My name is Zaire Wolf, and think big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Travis Wolf, Jr., and I've got to say to you what you're doing, doing especially for you over there. Yo, it's a lot more where I came from, and keep doing what you're doing, so keep it up. I know that it's bad and it's wrong, or you don't feel good doing it. 